Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. And remember, I, I know I told you I wanted to do a couple stories, just kind of to hear from a couple people. Not sure how many of these I'll do, but had another one come in that I saw. And Miss Bianca, she was available and able to get on Zoom with us. So I thank you so much for that, Miss Bianca. And I really want to hear from you and kind of hear your story. Now, now let me ask you, are you, you look a little young. So are you in a generation where you're not afraid or ashamed to say your age? Oh yeah, I'm 30 years old. Okay, wow. Look, 22. That's all I right. know. I hear that all the time. Okay. <laughs> and now tell me about, you know, what what brought you to my channel first and then what kind of led you to want to speak up on your story. Okay, so my mother recommended me your channel. Um, she would send me like these little links on, it was actually your Instagram that I saw. And then she was saying that you had a YouTube channel. So I was like, I got to get into this because my train of thought was exactly what you're talking about, but it's not a common conversation. So I felt like at the time that I was like the only one that was thinking this way. And maybe it was me that was off, you know, maybe times have changed and that is why I can't meet a guy that is, you know, like-minded in the sense of what you're talking about. And so I really appreciated that. And I was like, let me go ahead and subscribe because this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is what I need. This is what I need to, you know, just make sure that I'm confident. in. so when I'm going to meet a man, that these are the standards that I have and it's okay to have those standards. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That's amazing. So now tell me about this dating story. I cannot remember at all if you put a synopsis in the email or not. But um, so what, what, what year was it? And, you know, kind of take me through it. How did you meet? OK, so this was last year. This was last year, May. Um, I live in Florida and um, I met this. Actually, my homegirl was telling me about Facebook dating and she was like, girl, you got to get on it. It's better than like POF and all these other um, websites or apps. So I was like, Facebook got a dating? Let me try it. So I go on there. I get set up. It seemed to me like it was a little bit better because it seemed like they have a higher standard on Facebook dating. You have to have your picture. You have to have like a whole breakdown of your profile. Everything had to be filled out. You know, this means they have Facebook. So they have social media that you have access to. And you can also link your Instagram. So you can see, you know, if they're not hiding nothing, you can see if they have a family and things like that. So I liked it at first. I got on it and um, I did get some messages. Um, I saw this guy on there who messaged me, you know, we had mutual um, likes to each other and we started to get acquainted and right away, you know, he asked for my phone number. He was ready to meet up right away. So I was like, okay, cool, no problem. So I think we met up like two days after talking online but it was like when I say texting I mean he was texting me back to back to, the conversation was for hours every day and so I was like okay he he definitely got time you know he's not hiding anything so I was like all right let's go ahead and meet up so we met up at a Red Lobster in our city and it went very well you know there was nothing you know that was a red flag for me he had his phone right side up so you know it wasn't looking like he was hiding anything. He wasn't getting any notifications. No, his phone wasn't ringing. Everything was great. He was very friendly to the waitress. You know, he gave her a nice tip. You know, he was, you know, very attentive to our conversation, spoke well. You know, he said he believed in God like I do. Um, he did not curse. You know, everything was good. Everything was good. But, you know, this was the first date. And now, you know, I'm telling the story. Hindsight is really 2020. <laughs> So after that, um, he, I had to go home, you know, I have two kids, by the way, I have two children and I had to go home, you know, I have a responsibilities and he wanted to stay and I'm like, let's go out here, you know, let's hang out some more. I'm like, no, you know, we'll meet up another day. There's always another day. So eventually we did meet up another day. We went to go get tacos like the next week. And it was also a, a great time. You know, we start talking about, you know, God, because I really, that is my faith. And, you know, I want to talk about God every chance I get. I always want to have a conversation about it. So we did talk a lot about God. You know, he's saying that he was um, celibate as so was I. And um, I have to say during that time, I was listening to 
the podcast in the dark. <laughs> and he was saying the opposite of what I was doing. And so at that time, he was saying that, you know, if you have kids, like he was just talking about on your live, if you have kids, how can you be abstinent? You know, like you can't do that. And so I was second guessing what I was doing. I'm like, well, is this realistic for me to do? Because I do want to do that. I want to have a different, you know, dating experience in my life. I'm tired of the same cycle. So I was like, well, I don't want to have to give it up. That's what I, you know, that's what I was already doing. How I got two kids. I don't want that. So I was like, I wanted something different, but listening to that man, he was saying to do the opposite. So I was considering it. So eventually fast forward, you know, um, this had to be like a month later, you know, I invite him to my apartment. I have not seen where he lived yet, but he did come to my place first and my children were asleep. So he didn't get to meet them that day, but um, he was, you know, here we're watching a movie, having a little date night and um, he didn't want to leave. So I was like, okay, you know, you could spend the night. It was like one o'clock in the morning. You could spend the night, I guess you could sleep on the couch. And I slept in my bed. And so the next morning, you know, I'm thinking, all right, it's Monday, you know, it's time to go to work. I work from home and I figure he has a job. So he has to go to work. So he's like, oh no, I don't have to go to work today. I'm on vacation for two weeks. And so I was like, okay, all right. And so we didn't really get to talk about what he did for work. He was kind of vague with it. Um, but I did find out later that he's an Uber driver and uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but, you know, just say that. <laughs> so uh, eventually he did meet my kids and he was very loving to my kids. My son is nine. My daughter is five. And he was like, you know, your son looks just like me. I'm going to be a great father. I want kids, you know, and all that stuff. And I'm like, okay. Let's now, how far in was this? This was like a month and a half like six weeks into it and he's saying that I'm like you know that was really nice to say but you know my kids have their own dad so I was like all right cool I guess um and then eventually you know it started to become an everyday thing he was here every day he did not want to leave he was just like I love spending time with you you know this is great you know I don't want to go home and all this other stuff and so it, it started to get a little bit uncomfortable for me because he was in my space and he wasn't really helping out around the house, you know, he was messing up my bed, you know, and to be honest, he had like a, a body odor that was strong, you know, he would sleep in and I could smell it in the kitchen and he's in my bedroom and so I would have to go in my room. So I'm like, hey, can you, can you go take a shower? Because this... Uh, what, uh, what you could smell? It just smelled like you know like old gym socks it just didn't smell he just everybody has a smell i guess and his just didn't smell pleasant but it was strong you know like he would get up out the bed and my bed would smell like it i would have to wash my sheets <laughs> it was bad it was bad and i didn't know how to have that conversation you know i don't really know you know i, I don't know how to talk about it. it's kind of an awkward conversation yeah so fast forward you know I realized he, now, now, now we, at what point did y'all start sleeping together? So we ended up sleeping together around the six week mark. And that advice you heard from the dark played on your conscience. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I would listen to that at home and, you know, on my phone and, the let's call the man the dude at the time Eddie so he would come and be like oh you listen to him like oh yeah I like what he says and this and that he was like you need to take his advice you need to do what he says and I'm like really because I would watch it and like you were saying to watch it for entertainment but it really started to affect my personal life I really started to think that what this man was saying was true it was golden and this is how I need to live my life and that was not so it was not so so um, fast forward to now, we started having deeper conversations, you know. Hold on. Listen, <laughs> folks. Listen, folks. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> you cannot make this stuff up. Now, y'all see me on live. I got off live and came on here. Me and Bianca ain't never talked before. We ain't had no prep no. conversation. I literally cut off live and came with Folks, you can't make this stuff up. I know. Go, go ahead, Bianca. So around, six mark, so, so around six week mark, y'all living together. Peace, thank. <laughs> 
all right, he doesn't have children. You know, I asked him if he was, you know, ever had a relationship or whatever. He said that he was married, you know, oh, he was, he's Cuban and Brazilian. So he was married back in Cuba. And he said that his wife passed away in a car accident. So I'm like, wow, okay, I'm sorry to hear that. Wow, okay. So then eventually, you know, we started having deeper conversation and he wanted to ask me, you know, how much do you make a month? You know, what are your bills like? So I'm like, okay, you must be asking because you're trying to pay. So we had that conversation. You know, I told him how much I make a month. You know, I, I love my life. Everything is going well for me. I just moved to this area, so I'm loving it. And um, he was like, oh, I make more than you. And I was like, how do you make more than me? You do Uber. And so, and so he was like, oh, I make, you know, like 6,000 a month and I can give you, you know, money to pay the rent and all that stuff. I was like, okay, I mean, I, I'm not going to say no. So I was like, all right, cool, no problem. So he was here, like I said, every day, every single day he was here. And it eventually came out to where we started arguing because it was just, we didn't know each other enough. And the little things would get to me. Like I said, he did not clean up. He would make a mess. So I would, it was like, I had three kids. So I had to clean up everything. And then at the end of it, you know, he was always like telling me what to do. And like, you need to stop spending so much money on groceries. You need to stop buying, you know, all these shoes and clothes for yourself and for your kids. I'm like, well, if I don't buy it, who gonna buy it? Are you offering? And then he would just be like, no, no, I'm just saying. And so I was like, I don't, uh, I don't really respect the fact that you're telling me what to do and my money. And then you can't even contribute to, you know, to the household. <laughs> So that became an argument. And I was like, look, I think what you should do, what we should do is you should go home and we should just, you know, slow down because I feel like things are going too fast and I don't want this to be a train wreck, you know? So I was like, you should go home. And he was like, I'm not going home. And I was like, what do you mean you're not going home? He's like, if I go home, you know, we won't be together. It's like, you leave me. And I said, well, why would you say that? And, you know, they say, because, you know, you know, that space of us apart, you're going to go meet somebody else. You know, you're beautiful. Guys are going to approach you and you're going to meet somebody else and we're going to break up. So I was like, wow, that wouldn't happen. But I mean, all right. So he stayed even longer. <laughs> so then it, it became a regular thing. We would argue all the time. He said, you know, I'll give you money for this. I'll give you money for that. And it never happened. And it just became like, I'm sick of this. I don't want to live like this. This is going nowhere. This already went too fast for me. I want to stop it before it gets worse. And um, he wouldn't leave. He literally would not leave my apartment. I had to call the police on him for him to get out of my apartment. And he eventually left because he heard me call and then he was like all right she's serious he eventually left and then um maybe like the next day he was texting me apologizing I'm sorry you know I didn't mean for us to happen this way I'm just afraid to lose you I'm like we just met <laughs> I'm just afraid to lose you you know and like can we please start over and so I was like no you know I do not see a future with you at all so I would like to just end it here. And so he said, like, well, can we at least be friends? And I was like, sure, we can be friends, you know, no problem. We can be friends. You cannot come into my house. We are not sleeping together again. You know, none of that. So he was like, okay. And so eventually we started communicating again. I forgot to add that. I told you that he believes in God like I do, but it was not the same belief. He was a Jehovah Witness and he was trying to convert me. And so that was awkward. Um, I don't really know too much about Jehovah Witnesses. He was the first person I've ever met that was a Jehovah Witness. And I'm not knocking anybody for their religion. I just know mine. And mine is that I worship Jesus Christ, the Son, the whole three, all three of them, you know. And so that was a little awkward. And um, him trying to convert me, I felt, I felt uncomfortable and I felt like we're unequally yoked. So this is not going to work. So fast forward we're friends now. And I was in the pool with my kids and I um, go to get my phone because I had playing music on my phone to go change the song. And I saw his text and he was like, oh, I'm at the bar. I'm, you know, just taking a bunch of shots because we're not together. I'm depressed. You know, um, I miss you. Um, if this is not going to work out between us, I really just want to end it right now. And I'm just like, what? That's not what Jehovah's Witness do. You can't do that. I said, no, sir. 
I say, well, don't do that. It's not, it's never that serious. Remember, we just met about now it's like two months. We just met two months ago. Your life was fine before you met me. My life was fine before I met you. So there's no need for you to do that. Yeah. And so he was like, no, no, like, you don't understand. He was like, are you in the pool? And so I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm in the pool with the kids. And he was like, I'm about to come, I'm about to come over there and drown myself. And I was like, don't play with me. I said, do not play with me. You do that, I'm going to get out of the pool and I'm going to walk away. So he did come to my area and he did go in the pool, fully dressed, socks, shoes, everything. And he jumped in the water. And so my kids are there. And I know, I'm sure people really do this, but I knew, I just knew that he was looking for attention. And I was like, let's go. I was like, y'all, let's go. And so I told my kids, let's go. He got up out the water because he heard me leaving. He was like, where are you going? I said, I'm going home because you acting stupid. What are you doing in front of my children? And he was like, well, I'm just, you know, sad that, you know, we broke up. And I really thought that we had a future together, you know. And I'm sorry, let me go back a little bit. When we were together for those little six weeks, he had already told his mom about me. He had told his whole family about me, you know, and his best friend. He was always on the phone. Hey, I'm outside. I'm outside with my baby. I'm outside with my future wife. And I thought that was sweet. And then, you know, he was starting to tell me, you should tell your mom about me. Tell your brother about me, too. So I'm like, all right, cool. You know, I didn't think nothing of it. I thought it was the things that you would usually worry about as a woman. I did not have to worry about because he was so willing to talk about me to other people, brag about me and say these things. So I'm like, all right, you know, that's cool. So I did the same thing. I told my mom and my mom was like, no, he is not the one. She's like, I don't it's, it's not him. (laughs) <laughs> I'm like you don't you don't know him you know and so, <laughs> and so she was already like no I don't even want to meet him I'm good I know he is not for you so back to the scenario he was going to go ahead and do that but he did not because when I left he left he got up and he got out the water and he was like hey can I come in your house can I rinse off I'm I got chlorine on me I said no you cannot because you should never do that you can go home and go bathe that's what you can do so fast forward Finally, all that is over. I go to the gym and he already knew the gym I was going to. And I realized that he started to follow me around. He started to follow me to the gym. I would see his car parked in my neighborhood when I come home at night and I confronted him. I'm like, what are you doing in my neighborhood? And he was like, oh, I just want to see if you're home. I want to talk to you. That's why you have my phone number. Send a text. So he'd be like, oh, well, I just wanted to see you. And I just, please, I just can't live without you. And I just have to have you. And then he starts to get closer to me. And I start to back up. I'm like, wait, no, 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 no. Don't come close to me because I will run you over with this car. Don't come close to me. What is it that you want? I want to get back with you. I said, no, we're not going to get back, Eddie. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. We're not getting back together. And then this, what you're doing is making it even worse. You're scaring me at this point. So he didn't get the message. He would bring stuff. I would come to my home and he would bring stuff at my door. I would see roses, my kids' favorite candies at the at the door and stuff. And it started to be scary. I started to drive out of town. Like I'm going to another city and I would see him on the highway with me, behind me, following me. Yes. And so I started to freak out. And then he was like, following the people that would like add me on Instagram, he started to add them to see, you know, if I moved on, if I'm dating someone else, he would send them messages. Are you dating Bianca? Like, who are you to her? Do you know her? And I would know because they would tell me like, Hey, who was this dude? Uh, Cause you know, I'm just following you. I don't even know you. And I'm just like, I'm so sorry. This is crazy. I had to go to the sheriff's office and get a restraining order on this man for him to stop Mm. but it but he still didn't stop he did not stop what i had to do was how old was he he was 30 okay i was 29 he was 30 and now on the look scale what would you give him if you had to rate him or who did he look like if you had to pick a celebrity or like how, how how did he look to you oh he was attractive he was you know, dark skin. Um, he had, you know, light brown eyes. He was a when little bit taller than me. When you say dark skin, do you mean like black person dark skin or like a? Yeah, he was black. 
What is a black Hispanic? Oh, like me. So I Afro thought Latina or Latino. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you call it? Yeah. Okay. But I was saying black because I'm I'm um Colombian and Jamaican. He's Cuban and Brazilian. So when I met him in person, uh, he had a really strong accent and I don't have an accent. I don't speak Spanish. So I was like, oh, okay. I was surprised. I was like, a, that was a plus because I thought that was really cool that he had an accent. But he was a little bit taller than me. I'm 5'5". Five, five. He was like 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, you know, a little bit taller than me. But he was attractive. He was handsome, brush cut, you know, cute guy. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. He just looked harmless, you know, you would think. But he started to stalk me. And he started to send those messages that he's going to, you know, end himself and do all these things. And I'm just like, I, this is scary, you know? So it came to a point where the day that I kicked him out of my house and I had to call the police, he actually took some of my items. He took um, some shoes of mine, some Nikes. And um, he said it was an accident, but it was not. You know, they're not your shoes. Um, so I was like, I need my shoes back. He was like, well, come get it. I'm not coming to get it. So I sent my brother to go and get shoes for me. And my brother is older. He's only a year older than me, but he went to go get the shoes. And he had to let dude know, don't bother my sister again, because you're going to see me again. And that, that's how it had to end right there. Mm, mm. Now, what's your brother? He Colombian and Jamaican too? Or? Yeah. Colombian and Jamaican? Yeah. Yeah, I'd have been scared too. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> and he's he's like 6'3. Yeah. yeah. He I'm was not. in the military and he got muscles. He goes to the gym every day. He lived there. Oh yeah. Six three. And he looking down at five seven. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yes. Man. So man. So I'll tell you what it is. For one. So he had his own place. The guy had an apartment. He had a room that he was renting. That's what I was going to say. It sounded like to me he was either renting a room or living in that car that he was driving for Uber. I'm sorry. Let me talk about, let's talk about the car. So whenever we go out, he always want to take my car. And I was like, well, why don't you take your car? Like, why are we always taking my car? Why not take your car that's parked in the guest spot in my neighborhood? It's like, oh, no, I don't want to take my car. So one day we was going out downtown and I was like, we taking your car. So he was like, no, no, no. I walked to his car and I said, let's go. We're taking your car. And he was like, no, I got stuff in here. I look in his car. He got shoes. His whole wardrobe is in the back seat. I was like, okay, so this dude probably living in his car, you know, no judgment, but you know, let's just be honest. And if you're, I feel like if you're in that situation, then maybe dating is not something you should be doing at this time. It's like, get yourself together. That's okay. That's We've all thing. had struggles. That's okay. Mm -hmm. He wasn't looking for a relationship. And that's the lesson to, to the people is like a lot of times, I, that's why I try to tell women all the time that the men who get on online dating, they just not in the right space. It doesn't mean that they're a bad guy. It doesn't mean that they're all crazy. <laughs> It just not in the right space because as a man it's such a reward to go out and be walking and to approach a woman it's it feels so invigorating you feel like a real man like nothing feels manly about getting online to do online dating and so that's why mm -hmm. i say 9.9 .9 out of 10 men that do online dating they own there for a weird reason and for him, it sounded like he was looking for some somewhere to stay. It sounded like maybe right. if was he born in another country or was he, he born, was born in Cuba? And, raised in Miami. Okay. So being born in Cuba, it's like sometimes you could be behind the eight ball if you mm -hmm. come from another country as far as credit, as far as mm -hmm. social security number, or you know, <laughs> just having a green card instead of having, you know, citizenship. That's not what he said, though. That's not what he told me. Like when he said, oh, I make more money than you. I was we were walking one time and he was on the phone with his best friend. And I felt like this moment was like a setup. His best friend called and was like, hey, can I get, you know, twelve thousand dollars? His best friend is Jamaican. I need to go to Jamaica. I need to go get some money out to my whatever he needed for Jamaica. And his and his response was like, yeah, I'll send it to you right now. And I'm looking at him like, you don't have twelve thousand dollars to send. Why are you playing? And, so and he, 
he and went he out of his it. way to show me the receipt, the transaction that he sent the twelve thousand. It was like a week later. He showed it to me, but it it cannot be real. It cannot be real mm-hmm. because he didn't have no money to pay for anything. I paid for everything, and he <laughs> he definitely couldn't make. He definitely wasn't making six thousand dollars a month and renting a room. Right. And got his whole. And he wasn't up. doing Uber. He was still on vacation after six weeks. That we he didn't he didn't work. And Uber drivers don't get a vacation. Exactly. <laughs> they drive every day. <laughs> Now exactly. they could take a vacation, but the point of doing Uber exactly. is not to vacation. Mm-hmm. And, and right, the point of doing Uber right. is, is to grind, you know. And so, exactly. and they can make money. They can make good money, especially when it first started. But now it changed, and so mm-hmm. they still make what they used to make. And so, if it was like this super lucrative thing that's easy, then everybody would be doing. Mm-hmm. It. It's like they could make exactly, money, but they grinding. They could make money. Yeah. They driving all they're driving all day. All day. Right. All day long. And exactly. so some had to be up with his paperwork, whether it was his credit <laughs> or if he was a felon as to why he didn't have an apartment. Because mm-hmm. Uber drivers definitely make enough money to afford an apartment. And then the thing about his Uber, maybe you're right, because the thing about his Uber account is that he could not use his name or information. As a matter of fact, he asked me to use mine to have a separate Uber account, but his initial Uber account is his cousin's. So I'm like, why can't you use yours? So because mm-hmm. you know. he had to give his um, cousin, he had to give his cousin too big of a cut. And he <laughs> wanted to use your information because he figured you weren't gonna ask him for nothing because you're supposed to be his girlfriend. But his cousin, like, man, I'm taking a chance. I'm doing this for you. So you got to shoot me X amount of dollars. That's why he wanted to switch to yours. And so he was living in his car. He got a room before your brother came over. He was living in that car. Because even if you got a room, you're going to put all your stuff in the room. Right. So he had been living in that car. And that's why he didn't want to leave your place. That's why he said he was vacationing for two weeks. That's why he smelled. That's Mm -hmm. also why he stunk like that. Mm -hmm. Because... Like you say, everybody got their own little scent, but it ain't going to be a scent to where you could smell it from the bedroom to the kitchen. That's, yes. That's a scent that's of a... not showering for weeks. Yeah. You know, at least a whole week he ain't shower. And so that's what that was. And now the thing too is he looked at you as attractive and he could see that he was attracted to you Whereas, so it's kind of like he wasn't just looking for help. He also wanted his help to be pretty to him. Yeah, but I I will also say one of the things that I know not to do, I'm not going on dating sites again. I'm not on there. But one thing I, I do is that I'm so, I'm such an honest person. And like what you see is what you get. That's exactly how my profile is. And if you could say that I put way too much information but I put it all out there on, on Facebook dating. So he probably read that and was, you know, plotting. And that's my fault. Yeah, yeah. he could have been. And what you put out there, like what you make or where you work or whatever? No, I did put, you know, what I do for a living. I put that I got two kids, you know, you know, I love God. I go to church every Sunday. You know, I take that seriously. I, I'm a different person today than I was even at that moment because I was listening to things that just were not coinciding with what I was trying to do in my life. And so once I cut that out and I'm listening to this here that is telling me what I was doing and what the Bible says, not just a human standard, but God's standard is the right way. That is how I live my life. So when I put on Facebook was that was, you know, I'm a believer. I got two kids, you know, I'm from Florida, you know, I'm looking for something serious. I'm not here to play games, you know, all of that stuff, you know, my pictures and everything is up there. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then too, when he is listening to men in the dark, he's also going to hear that a woman with children are le- is less than. Mm-hmm. and that a woman with children should be desperate and exactly. so guys will come thinking that you believe that and you feel that exactly so they will play on that mm-hmm. oh, that's exactly got, what happened oh you got kids so your standards got to be lower because you say how you say you five five yes 
So you naturally easily could require five eight. He what you said he five six five seven. You could say yeah. five nine and be realistic. Mm -hmm. And at five five, because when you put on heels, you might be five eight. Mm -hmm. And so he being under that height threshold, assume that you got kids, so your standards lower, or or that you're not being superficial, or that you're not you know judging like that. So mm -hmm. he was playing on that too. And so here's some less so some lessons. What do you say some lessons you have learned from that experience what not to do in the future? Okay, what I learned from that is that to keep my standards number 1, it's okay to have standards. Um keep those standards if the person does not meet those standards, not saying that he has to be check off everything off the list. But as a whole, if you're just not in agreement with how this person is living their life, do not lower your standards for anybody. I don't care if you feel like at the time I was feeling like, you know, when I was listening to that podcast, you know, it might be harder for me to date maybe because I do have kids, even though they are well behaved, you know, they could be perfect. Just the fact that I have two kids will make it harder for me to, you know, have a, a great dating experience. So I would then uh, lower my standards. Okay, he cursed a lot. He smoked. You know, that's okay. But deep down inside, that's not really what I'm trying to do. It's not really okay. So I would lower my standards just to think that that would be more realistic for me when, no, God never said that. That's what he said. That's what the podcast on Dark said. That's not what God said. So I realized that not to lower my standards and to just focus on myself, not go out here looking on um, for a man just waiting for God to present him because during this time after him I'm I am celibate I'm actually not you know trying to get involved because I like where I'm at right now God is working on me He has changed me from that time just a year ago, not even but just a couple months ago to who I am today and I am so thankful that I went through that. I learned the lesson. I'm here. Thank you for allowing me to come on your platform to even give my story so that other people will see the signs and know to run that first moment, you know, that first couple of weeks when he don't want to leave your house, let him go. Uh, right. take him, so in the him future, home. in the future, will you let a man in your house that early? No. And will you let a man spend the night that early? Nope. And then nope. will you let a man stay two or three nights that early no and, no and those are the lessons right to go there. Home. you're right those are the lessons you really got to drive home because that way you don't get played by a man who's looking for help exactly because if if a man ain't looking for help he like his space too as a single mm -hmm. as a single man and if a man is healthy he like his space too so mm -hmm. the same way you like your space he will like his space too mm -hmm. healthy individuals we like our space you know, my wife go off by herself. I go off by myself. I have my space. She have her space. When you healthy, you like a little bit of space from time to mm -hmm. time. And then you come together and you have that together time. So him moving in that fast definitely was a red flag. And you did right by calling the police. That's what a lot of women don't do. They think they can handle it themselves and they wait forever and they don't get the police involved. Mm -hmm. You also did right by having your brother go over there it's kind of right and kind of wrong because it could have you knew the guy and so you knew he was soft but <laughs> the guy was not soft it could have turned into something real big so mm -hmm. that was a that was a good thing that you slipped through it but in the future i would just say call the police you know just just keep putting the police on it because they got a badge and they got a gun and that right. way you don't have to put your brother life at risk if you meet a man who truly crazy. And, yeah. That's and with true. This, and with this guy, you still got to watch your back because mm -hmm. you still got to have your eyes open. I got cameras in my house since then. I got three cameras at the front, so that's good. I'm always going to see if he, whoever comes to my front door, I can see I can see the parking lot where I can see my car because that was traumatic. I mean, he was following me for a long time and I did not know. I had no idea that he was following me until after the fact. And then let me just say one more thing. He told me that his wife had passed away. He was never married. It was a lie. He had made that story up. Mm. So it's like, where is your mental at for you to come up with that? Like, why would you even say that? Something like that. That's terrible. Terrible. Real terrible. 
real terrible. Probably thinking that if he say he's never been married or something, he'll look like he's never been mature or never had a real relationship and that maybe you wouldn't like him because of that. But, or he just, he just, and now this is what I would say too, to the people. For one, the video that the young lady was on only has 11,000 views. So it's not like a million people seen that video. And then the amount of emails I got was only this many. And Bianca, that's your first name, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. And Bianca was like, you know, the second or third email. So I say that to say a lot of times women try to think like, oh, that's just one story. Oh, that's one in a million. No, this is a very small pool. And we already, the first two people that wrote me has a, a wild story. <laughs> it go to show you, this is very, very, very common when you get online dating. And yes, it can happen when you meet a man in person, but it's like he approaches you, but it's far less likely because mm -hmm. you read him initially and he got to be bold enough to have the confidence to approach you. Right. So when I, when I started dating Eddie, I asked him, I always ask people, if you see me in person, would you approach me? And people are like, no. I said, well, why not? He said, because I'd be too scared to. You're intimidating. I was like, oh, okay. All right, cool. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> listen, listen, people, you can't make this stuff up. I don't like to hear that. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I really appreciate you, Bianca. And I know there's so many more nuggets that'll come to you if we continue to talk but just what you shared was huge mm -hmm. that was that was a lot i'm gonna be honest with you i'm sitting over here scared i'm like man <laughs> man you trying to find my address <laughs> oh you yeah, yeah, you her <laughs> I, uh, uh, hopefully he'll never see them but no I, yeah <laughs> i hope the men who do see it that it scared them away from online dating and that they realize right. that the jig is up and it's time to be real man it's time to grow and to the ladies, y'all get off that online dating. Get off that online yes. dating. If you, if, if you don't meet a man in person, okay, oh, well. Keep working on yourself. Keep loving you. Work on your whatever career, business, brains, and body. And when it's time, a man going to approach you. And the thing about it, Bianca, you're not intimidating at all. You're intimidating mm -hmm. to a man who don't deserve you. Mm -hmm. you, your spirit repels the spirit of a man who's not on your level and so now if you were six foot four a man might say oh you're intimidating yeah. you five five he could look at you and see that you know you carry yourself well but a man who is confident who is secure he's ready he will have the confidence to approach you because you don't have a mean look like mm -hmm. if, if you don't have a mean look, you have a very kind of friendly look, you know, like a, a real chill girl next door. Like you're not trying to be all Corella DeVille and look all sassy. And mm -hmm. so that is a welcoming look so that a man who is ready, he's going to feel comfortable. Now, some men will assume that you're taken because you yeah, look like that too. Yeah, you look like a wife. And so because you don't try to do too much and you have two kids. So mm -hmm. that shows a man, you know, tried to go that way. Like he he wanted to see it, but he wasn't ready. He wasn't man enough. And so that's why you being abstinent is the right thing to do. Absolutely. And get into that place. And because you wife ready. And you will be a wife if you hold on to your standards. Yes. I guarantee you that. If you hold on to your standards, you'll be a wife. Yes. Thank you. Listen, I All believe right. that. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to my story, my crazy story. I appreciate you. Give me this opportunity. I really do. Hey, no problem. I appreciate you making this happen for everybody. So yes. God bless you. Take care. We'll yes, talk God bless you too. All right. Bye-bye.